I'm Jeff Philbin and this is Dinner Diaz, where great chefs share their best recipes and show you how to make them today. Soy glazed short ribs, get your appetite ready. Jeff Philbin Show, Dinner Diaz, where chefs share soy glazed ribs delight. That, my friends, is a haiku, because joining us with his delicious dinner idea, or as we like to call it, a dinner dia, is Chef David Reyes, executive chef of Haiku in downtown Tampa. Haiku's known for its Asian fusion dishes, but today, David, you're making something a little bit more traditional. Certainly very homey. Uh, we're going to take a very traditional short rib, uh -huh. but we're going to jazz it up with some really cool ingredients. I love it. So what's the first step then in finding and making this great dish? So the first step, uh, we're going to season and sear our short rib. Now, is short rib an, uh, an expensive cut of meat? It typically isn't. Okay. It is a little challenging to find if you have your favorite butcher or... Uh, favorite grocery store, a lot of high quality grocery stores will have short rib. Uh, occasionally you'll have to go in and ask and maybe order it ahead. Uh, what the short rib, the short rib actually comes from the short rib plate, mm -hmm. which typically three bones from the bottom of the rib. Um, and when you cut those in half, you have these beautiful portions that you can just cut down each single rib and each short rib plate will give you about six portions. And what are you looking for to really find the best cut? The best cuts uh, typically have a lot of more marbling. Uh, prime, prime cuts will, uh, prime quality beef will have uh, really good marbling. In this, in this case, Wagyu. Okay. Uh, American Wagyu has a lot of marbling. And what we're going to want to do is basically go right at it, mm -hmm. season, season with salt and pepper, nicely coated. And we're going to very so, simple. Very simple. Keeping it simple, you're going to add on a lot of layers of flavor as we go along. Um, but the first step, searing in a lot of flavor, okay. locking in a lot of flavor, uh, giving it a, a diverse level of flavor with caramel caramelization um, is really important. Okay. And what are we cooking in right now? So just straight uh, vegetable oil. Uh, you're going to want to bring it to just before the smoke point. So if your oil is smoking, Definitely a little too hot. So no olive oil for a dish like this? Definitely not olive oil. You want a neutral flavored oil. Okay. Something with a high smoke point like canola oil. Um, you know, if you have peanut oil at home, that's fine to use. Uh, it's certainly, you know, a, an important part of the dish uh, to not kind of be present. In other words, not impart too much flavor. Uh, olive oil definitely wouldn't work. Definitely wouldn't work, but imparting so much flavor and so much technique is something that you seem to be like an expert in, Asian cuisine, because you're an award winner. Back in April of 2023, if I'm correct, you were crowned the winner of Battle Sushi at the inaugural Tampa Bay Wine and Food Festival. Is that right? It was uh, a pleasure and an honor to be featured and to be invited uh, Look at this to over cook here. along with a lot of great chefs from Tampa. Uh, one of the things I love about the event is it brought a lot of chefs together to kind of meet each other. Yeah. We don't have a lot of time to hang out. Totally. You'd be surprised. Congratulations to being the winner in the inaugural one, too. It was quite an honor, truly. Um, now, what did you win? Two very important things. Okay. Bragging rights and a cutting board. Yeah, I'm trying to get the most mileage out of those bragging rights, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> well, rightfully so here. So now that we've seared off all sides, mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and remove short rib from the pot and we're going to add some vegetables. Now the timing on these is very important. You're going to put in what's called mirepoix, which mm -hmm. is basically a trilogy of very flavorful um, vegetables. And we're going to let them cook for a few minutes. Uh, what we're going to look for is slightly, just a little bit of color, not too much, to let them release the oils and, okay. and, and you know create that, that uh, layer of flavor that we're looking for. And, and so the mirepoix is just the carrots, it's the onion, it's the celery, it's your base. As you were saying, it's the foundation that flavors are going to be layered on top of. Eggs, absolutely. Now the, the, where this is going to take a little bit of a twist is we're going to add some ginger and garlic. Okay. Essential ingredients in Asian cooking. Totally. Um, something that, you know, can sit in your fridge nicely chopped, ready to use. Um, or uh, occasionally you'll buy it at the store already chopped. I like that, because you can chop it. Did you grate it? Could you grate it? 
You can do either or. Okay. It's just important to separate them into equal pieces uh, so that they cook evenly. Okay. Uh, garlic, a little dry, prone to burn if you let it sit, so you don't want that. Uh, so we're gonna let these vegetables go a little bit and then we're gonna add our ginger garlic, return our meat to the pot, I and then we're going to add our final ingredients. I love it because if you want to cozy up with this recipe tonight or print it, save it for the weekend. Chef Reyes has all the details on our website, dinnerdeals.com. Get your phone out, scan the QR code. We've taken all the hard work out of it for you there because who doesn't love a QR code these days? Absolutely. They're so easy to use. They came back. <laughs> they came back. They really made I'm a so comeback. I'm so glad they came back. It's so easy now. Absolutely. You should be able to pull up any menu at any restaurant with Absolutely. a QR code Absolutely. I mean, now. like, you know, before it used to be the app. Now it's just off for your phone. So please, go ahead. Go have fun. So we're going to go into our final step. We're going to add our ginger. Mm -hmm. We're going to add our garlic. And then we're going to return our short rib. Nice. Nice. Now, and you can, you can smell it a little oh, bit now. It's yes. starting to hit that oil, so it's starting to cook a little bit of that garlic, and that ginger is kind of going to bring that nice little bit behind that as well. And, you know, walk us through a little bit about f fusion cuisine as a whole. Like, if you were to put a definition, if you were Merriam Webster himself, or, uh, you know, what would that be? It's taking the best parts of global cuisine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's taking the best parts of French, the French approach, the ingredients uh, that are available throughout the world whether it be Mexican, Japanese, you know, we certainly take that approach at Haiku. Uh, we, we take phenomenal ingredients, uh, occasionally taking a traditional approach and occasionally taking a very modern approach. Um, you know, sometimes combinations of flavors uh, that just work, especially down here in Florida with the beautiful sun and, and, and atmosphere. You know, you want to enjoy the freshness yeah. of, per se, Latin cuisine, totally. but with beautiful Japanese ingredients. I absolutely love it. Now, are we ready for liquids? We are, we are just about ready. Okay. Uh, you want to have enough beef stock uh, to cover the short rib. Okay, so we've so, got beef stock that's going to go in next. Yeah, okay. beef, stock, beef stock next, and then finish it with soy. Mm -hmm. Give it a good turn, make sure it's well incorporated. Nice. Now, could you just use already bought from the grocery store in the container beef stock? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I would go with low sodium. Uh, you want to make sure you control the salt level. Mm -hmm. You're certainly adding a little more salt with the soy sauce. So I think that, that uh, point is very, very important. Low, okay. low sodium broth. And our final ingredient. And like I said. And that uh, was just soy sauce, that just was to finish just, it off. That was just regular soy sauce. Okay. We're going to give it a nice turn to get well incorporated. Nice. And this one is ready to go in the oven. You're going to want to cook it for about three hours. Okay. Uh, this is one of those. So quick on the preparation. Very And then quick. just pop it into the oven. Just let that be for the three hours. Absolutely. Uh, go do chores, watch a show. This is the uh, whole, like, you know, just put the Netflix on and just like, you know, absolutely. that poor glass of wine or something. I don't know. That's a great, or sake. Can, you can, you know what's even better? You can catch up on all of the Dinner Dia episodes as well. That's Binge true. watch it. I'm telling you guys, we would absolutely love that because while our short ribs go into the oven, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to show you how to make an amazing miso glazed eggplant side dish right ahead on Dinner Dia's. Philbin, welcome back to Dinner Diaz. Superb supper time suggestions from top chefs, and today is no exception. Battle Sushi winner himself, Chef David Reyes from Haiku in Tampa, is here with us. And before the break, we started on his soy glazed short ribs. We seared the short ribs and cooked them up with our mirepoix, garlic, ginger, beef broth, soy sauce. And while they cook, we've got some time for some sides, my friend, because a good beef dish needs a great starch, and I'm a meat and potatoes kind of a guy here. So what are we working with? So we're going to take some regular old russet potatoes mm -hmm. and cut them on the round uh, as equally sized as possible. Okay. And we're going to introduce another very unique ingredient, one of my favorite ingredients, Okinawa yam. Tell me a little bit about what an Okinawan yam is. So it's uh, a, a, a yam native to Japan. Uh -huh. And uh, what makes it very unique is I think, you know, its flavor is uh, somewhere between uh, sweet potato and an actual potato. Okay. Um, but one of the most unique things about it is its color. Its color. Whoa there, look at the vibrancy on that. Whoa, that is cool. 
Is this something easy to find at the grocery store? A lot of Asian markets tend to have it okay. uh, in plenty. Um, so to that, yes. I think uh, you know we have a lot of uh, great Asian markets here in Tampa, all of which I found to have them. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. So then, are you going to cut it the same? Yeah, it looks like you're cutting it the same size as. They a have a similar cook time to okay. a regular potato, so we're going to try and cut them uh, equally sized and. One of the great things about this ingredient is its nutritional value. Okay. Um, it has a lot of nutrients, um, more so than your average potato, uh, and it has like this sweet taste that coupled with your regular russets okay. kind of makes for a nice complexity there after uh, to go along with our short rib. Okay. Okay. So we're going to lay these on the tray. How many would you have per, per person, per portion size? Four slices per per per, per person. Okay. Excuse me. And, um, you know, I always like to have leftover. Uh, who does it? So we're going to go a little heavy. All right. Now we're going to cover them uh, with a little bit of oil. Okay. And what type of oil are we using here? Again, neutral flavored canola oil. Okay. Uh, in this case. And then, keeping it simple, salt and pepper. Nice. There's certainly a lot of complexity of flavors all around this dish. This one just needs to be potato. Yeah. And, it's, and, and in simplicity, you know, you don't want to have it outshine what's going to happen with those short ribs. You That's want it to complement it. Absolutely okay. correct, which, you know, adding to to that layered flavor for the dish, yeah. uh, we're going to go ahead and pop these in the oven and then focus on our eggplant. Awesome. Well, you put that into the oven. You don't need to be a sushi battle scarred chef to make this at home. This recipe and all of the recipes are on our website, dinnerdias.com, where you can watch this show again if you missed any of it. Just scan the QR code on the screen, take you right there. All right, and now what? So, again, another uh, exotic ingredient. Mm -hmm. Japanese eggplant. I love it, I so, love it. This uh, similar flavor to a regular uh, eggplant that you'd see at the grocery sure. store. Uh, in this case, um, to me, seems a little more denser. Uh, it'll cook somewhat faster. And its shape is different too. And, I mean, and its that, shape I, I, is slightly different. So we're gonna cut long ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna cut two eggplants. And this, the prep time on this, very quick. Cook time, also very quick. Now, how about where you can be able to find it, though? Is that going to be a traditional grocery store for this as well? This one will be a little easier to find. Okay. Um, I've seen them at Whole Foods, most markets. Um, this one's a little more this common. This one's a little bit more common, one. okay. Now, one of the things that we're gonna do, not only for presentation, uh, take a little pride in your, your dinner for, yeah. for the family, uh, but it also helps it cook evenly. Uh, we're going to score it. Nice. And now, what is scoring when it comes to uh, a, you know an item here? So, cooking, uh, you know, something like eggplant or fish gets scored uh, frequently on the skin side. You want to have uh, an avenue for that heat to enter the center of whatever it is you're cooking. And in this case, we're going to take nice long cuts from t from on, on a diagonal, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go the other way. Nice. Very simple. Take your time. I mean, we've got short ribs in the oven for about three hours. We've got a lot of lug that's going to come out in time. I mean, you need to make sure that, like, who you're cooking is for, that presentation's important. It's just one thing to put it onto the plate. It's another thing to say, hey, look, I took an extra step inside that moment of time that I had three hours to work with. I can score an eggplant, right? Absolutely. There's a lot of love all up and down this dish. So we are going to place that on the sheet tray. Okay. And again... A little bit of oil, just right down the center. And again, just that neutral oil. Neutral oil, not imparting a lot of flavor. The eggplant needs to be the eggplant. Mm -hmm. And again, salt and pepper. I love the That's simplicity it. in it. That's it. We're certainly going to put another layer of flavor once it comes out of the oven. Um, but again, it's, that, it's the key word there, layer. It's that layering of flavor that we're going for with the finished product. Speaking of layers, we're going to pop this in the oven and okay. we're going to focus on our next layer of flavor. Cool. A miso glaze. I love that. I love that. So we've got our vegetables into the oven and we're going to do this miso glaze. So how do we start with the miso glaze? So with the miso glaze, uh, the focus and the reason you're heating it up is simply to dissolve the sugar uh, so that's evenly distributed throughout the glaze. Uh, we're going to start with a little bit of mirin. Okay. You see we've preheated now, our... Now, for those that are unfamiliar with mirin, what is it? It is rice wine. Uh-huh. 
and uh, it's fortified, so it's sweet. But it's a nice base that we're going to be going in. Because you also threw in another liquid there. What was that? That was sake. And you didn't give me any? We didn't do a sake bomb? I was, I was excited for that part. That was... After the show. After, after okay, the show. Okay, fine. All right, fine. Uh, we'll so, have one with the viewers, too. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now, so, what's going into our pan now? So, sugar, granulated sugar. Okay. And this is the part that's really important to get right. Uh, make sure it's nicely dissolved before you go on and add the uh, miso. Uh, so, again, a couple layers of flavor here. We're going to add one more that's extremely perfect. And while we add that miso and our veggies are cooking, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to stir this up for our short ribs. And that's right ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz. On the menu today, soy glazed short ribs from the man behind Tampa Asians Fusion Hotspot Haiku and its executive chef, David Reyes. Before the break, we start our sides and roasted eggplant, which should be ready for the miso glaze we made earlier and let it cool. So, how comes the fun part, right? It does. It, the fun part is watching everything come together. Uh huh. So, the first thing we're going to do is finish our eggplant. Okay. And this is. Nice and hot, come, just came out of the oven. Nice. We're gonna spread our miso glaze that has cooled down mm -hmm. since we had it on the stove. Love it. And be generous with it because uh, you're gonna see how well this goes with the eggplant All once right. it comes out of the oven. So we're gonna pop it in the oven. Okay, you pop it in the oven. I'm stealing a little taste test on this one. I'm there you go. going right in for it. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> wow. That's got some flavor. Now, for our glaze. And then during the break, we also started our sauce here. That's going to be our sticky sauce that had the ginger, the garlic, the honey, brown sugar, soy sauce, lime, cilantro. Don't worry if you didn't get all of that one here. We're going to pull up that QR code for you, so you can follow along at any point. The last ingredient, some of our broth from the braise. Ooh. And we're gonna try and get it in without a lot of veggies. And all of that has just been for, you know, hours of bringing flavor that we layered, the depth behind it, that meat is coming through to it. Oh. If there is a, um, what do you call it, uh, theme to the, the, the dinner, uh -huh. it's layers and layers and layers of flavor. I dig, I love. That just one more. Okay. So we've roasted a little bit of broccolini mm -hmm. on the last leg of our potatoes roasting uh, to kind of finish off a complete meal. We're gonna let this simmer for just a, just a little bit. Okay, perfect, because I'm getting hungry. I mean, this is like, this is calling my name here on that part here. I just wanna get a little... Whoa. Santa came early. Oh yeah. So, our short rib, now fully braised. Ooh. That's very good. And don't forget that Chef David's recipe for a short rib sticky sauce and everything else we've been making today are on that website, dinnerdias.com. Scan the QR code, get the phone out, I'll take you right there. And this is going straight to that plate and into my belly. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is beautiful. Don't be afraid if the bone comes apart. Serve it with the bone. Let them know where that flavor where came, it came from. Where came from, exactly. exactly. It's that part of that presentation again. It's that little bit more. It's that whole... Don't waste anything here. Let's have some fun with it. So, all these layers of flavor. Uh, well, you go and pour that on. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, it's ribs versus these two as we taste test Chef David's soy glazed short ribs. That's right ahead on Dinner Diaz. Back to Dinner Diaz, showing you how to make great ideas for dinner, or as we call them, Dinner Diaz. Today, we've been joined by Chef David Reyes from Tampa's Haiku Restaurant. He's been making his soy glazed short ribs with roasted potatoes, broccolini, and this miso glazed eggplant. This is absolutely stunning. I don't even know if I want to like just take the picture or really go into it, but I think I have to do this for everybody at home. It's taste test time. Oh my God, you don't even need the knife. This just literally just falls right it apart. Fall apart. Oh my gosh. All right. The best well, thing I think is how everything comes together 
You have elements of sweetness, of that little lime juice coming through. Um, you know, the mm -hmm. soy glazed eggplant should make a lot of sense with this. It should all just make a lot of sense. It does. I and mean, you know what's the great thing is that not only was the scoring purposeful with the presentation, but as it cooks, it allows for it to open up. So that way then when that glaze hit it, you got more surface area, more flavor, and let's see if it really tastes out. Yeah, you could tell, you know, why mm -hmm. I was so generous with the glaze because, mm -hmm. you know, you want a lot of that on there. Um, eggplant is such a rich flavor. It just makes it so much better. I think this whole dish really uh, came together well. Came together well. It's very modest of you. This is absolutely fantastic. The layers of flavor, the depth is absolutely fantastic, and you're absolutely right. There's the subtleties of the flavors that come through right. where they're appropriate to come through in. Exactly. That glaze mm. kind of finishes it off. Anything on this dish really could stand alone, I think. No, um, but it's in perfect harmony because that's how you turn an idea for dinner into a dinner dia. Thanks again to Chef David Reyes, executive chef at Tampa Asian Fusion Restaurant Haiku. And here's one final haiku for you, my friend, Chef David. Thanks, true, for sharing short rib delight, joy for all to taste. To get the recipe for this delight and anything you've seen on the show, go to dinnerdias.com, get there by scanning the QR code in the corner of the screen here, and let us know if you make it for your dinner, just like Susan did. She made Chef Tyson Grant's lobster pasta, she added mushrooms, she added spinach, and that's the joy of food, is that you can take in a recipe, change it and evolve it to what you want. You did it, Susan, awesome job, this looks beautiful. I'm Jeff Philbin, thanks for watching. See you next time with more Dinner Diaz.